in the last class we discussed about the wire ropes, steel wire ropes, how they are used in the mining industry and uh, we will be doing more with the wire rope when we will be discussing about the rope holes system and the winding system. There we will have to do some of the wire rope calculations, but as a general understanding let us talk about that what type of problems are faced in steel wire ropes and then how they are maintained. So, our objectives of today's lecture is just to introduce the wire rope maintenance and then to reveal the wire rope problems, their causes and then what are the recent developments in the non-destructive testing of ropes. So, just to uh, refresh that you have studied already that the wire ropes are constructed with either fiber rope or fiber core rope or steel core rope and also we know that right hand lay rope and the left hand lay rope depending on this uh, how the wires in the rope and the ropes in the wire are laid depending on that we have got this ordinary lay and Lang's lay these the things we have discussed. Now, this uh, rope when they will be working, what is the working conditions in the mining industry full of dust, humid and in a very uh, difficult work conditions the wire ropes will be applied. So, what type of problems may arise and then uh, how they will have to be overcoming. So, one thing is very important that as because these are all made of uh, steel, they will be subjected to the problems normally the steel go that is it can be affected by corrosion, it will be affected by wear and tear, it will be uh, there can be misuse, there could be if the load depending on the load it can break and depending on different type of abuse these wires may be getting damaged or separated the strength of the rope may get deteriorated. And then we will need to test it now whether this what is the strength of it can be tested by destructive testing by making it to break we can find out the breaking load, but whether the internal conditions are properly working or not that can be found if we do some non-destructive testing. That means, while the rope is in service we need to do some instrumentations in the wear rope, so that we can know what is the condition of it. So, we will be addressing these issues, so that after attending this class you will be able to identify some common problems of rope and also you will be able to select that what will be the how we will have to keep it so that the problems are less that is how you will be handling the wear rope and also what how you will be lubricating whether there is a lubrication why it is necessary because there is a there will be a movement of the strand to strand wear to strand and that is why a lubrication is necessary in case of wear rope we will be discussing these issues today. Now, what is the typical problem what a wear rope face it is with the severity of the uses of these wear ropes may get damaged and it may pose a high safety risk due to and then in the job it can fail and you know that depending if the rope breaks or it fails then there could be a disaster also. So, wear of the external wares and the wares coming out of strength this is one problem that may takes place because if the wares uh, from a strand get peeled off and then they will be just taking out like that with a number of wares if get cut that means the whole rope strength will get reduced and sometimes the whole strand a particular strand may get damaged then the thicken that is your the diameter of the rope for a particular portions may get weakened and that becomes a weak point in the wear rope. So, sometimes the wares may rupture or sometimes there could be additional 
elongations. So, this type of problem are there in case of in our wear ropes. So, the typical problems of wear ropes that you can find out sometimes there could be as in the figure you can see that the end of the rope failed. They say it ruptured and then this your a particular way the all the wires and the strands got separated out. This is a failed rope you can see over there. Now, this is depending on the type of use many a times a wear rope will be subjected to very severe uses. So, the external wares and the wear can come out of the strand this type of problem problem is there. Now, this failure of the strand rupture of the strand and that excessive elongations that may lead to and then you can see in this figure how excessive wear has taken place. So, because of that wear that rope strength has got reduced over here. So, also that a wear rope can has, has, has it, it can be jumping out of the if that there is a uh, break is in the wear rope when it is running moving over the sieve it can come out of the sieve and then it will be falling on the side and then it will get that is rubbed differently and then the wear will get damaged. Sometimes there will be of course, due to repeated use that they did undergo fatigue and then over some some sieves if they are not of the proper diameter then there will be more stress developed in the wear ropes and they may fail. Sometimes the rope break out due to excessive strain because of the strain that they have got elongated and then there is a breakage of the wear rope over there. Now, such type of problems can also be there say you have got a clock that is your core screw type deformation the rope is getting deformed. Then bridge that is your barred cage formation that means, these strands are coming out of it and they are forming as a cage like things and then these portions will get weakened and then the rope will be ultimately damaged from here. Then sometimes a protrusion or a deformed core strand that is inside the core, core is getting damaged as a result it is getting swelled up and the whole wear rope is getting damaged like this. Sometimes small wears of the strand are coming out and forming small small loops you can see over there that is called looping. And sometimes a strand is getting flattened and then by that it is the, the gap between two strands they get come out as a result the rope is getting weakened and it can fail. And sometimes depending on the use you can have a clings or tightening of the rope sling formations this type of formation will be there and then this is at that wherever there is this band that it get tensed differently and then you can start getting a issue which can lead to failure of the rock. Now, sometimes this is the wares which are which are forming the strain that you can in the previous diagram you have seen these are the problems in the strands. These are the problems in the strands. Now, in that wares which is forming the strand they may also go undergo different type of failure that is your due to the overload they may go a tensile failure sometimes the bending fatigue because repeatedly the wires are exactly moving over the sieve and the drum there it is repeated bending it gives a bending fatigue. Sometimes it may undergo torsional break sometimes there may be a shear and cut sometimes you can get the due to the vibration a hammering fatigue may take place because of the vibrations in between that is on the sieve or the wear to that is your wear and the sieve there will be a hammering action because of the vibrations taking place during this movement of it. Then there is also a plastic wear that is a when a jammed wares get jammed and that is a plastic deformations in the wares may take place then corrosion fatigue and abrasion wear is also there. See, there are different types of the you can see some of the damaged wares figures that is exactly if it is a tensile flare a failure you can find out that due to the overload that is a thinning part of it it has got elongated and then failed. Sometime due to bending fatigue 
a different type of wear uh, that uh, damage you can see. Then torsion break you can see sometimes even you can uh, see when you are taking a small wear and then you, you give a twisting and all and after some time it get failed. So, that similar things may happen in your wear ropes also. Shearing and cut this is under different users conditions it may get a cut type of things. So, that corrosion is also one of the main problem you may fi find in different application situations. So, what we can do that means, such type of problems are there in the wears and the strains. So, we will have to be careful in handling the wear ropes and then particularly the clink will be formed when you are taking out of the reel and then fitting it at that time you need to take extra care. So, twist loop or kink of the wear should be avoided. If you can avoid certain these situations then your the, the, the maintenance of wear rope is basically avoiding the problematic situations you take utmost care. So, for example, moisture dust and that uh, uh, sulfurous or humic acid conditions depending on the uses of course, in mining you get mainly the sometimes the mine water which may be having very low pH value under that conditions they if the wear rope so particularly the hollows wear hollows rope and all if it is running through that type of watery conditions it may get damaged. So, you will have to be careful about it and you must not overload when you determine the, that we will be discussing those while while uh, studying the transportations like by uh, rope haulage and all we will be de de doing the calculations how to determine the diameter and how to determine the material of the wear. Now, that means every installation there is a specific uh, your prescription that it can be used only in that load conditions you must not overload it is a cl clear understanding. Similarly, the crushing and hammering action should not take place severe reverse bending should not be there that as bending you must avoid then the two small sieves drums then guide rollers should not be used. If you bend it on a small diameter then this exactly the it will get more tensed. So, that is why the diameter of the rope and the diameter of the drum their ratio as prescribed should be utilized. You avoid using smaller diameter sieves, hard rolling and rolling, rolling of the sieves and the rollers sometimes on which the rope will be moving that surface should not be very hard. So, if it is very hard definitely that will not wear your rope will get weared out. So, it is better to use certain form of liner that which will be exactly getting worn out and you can change that uh, sieve easily, but then the wares will be protected. Then because the laying of the wear rope and then putting it into service that is also a tedious and lengthy operation. So, you should increase the life of the wear rope as much as possible. Then own grooves broken soft shapes and rollers if you are having some own uh, parts are being used there can be sharp edges which may cut the wear and that damage may take place. So, that is why while using the wear rope all the components of the wear, wear rope system should be seen that there is no sharp edges are getting entangled with the process of the wear rope. Similarly, there is a need of lubrications in the wear rope. If your uh, wear rope is not properly lubricated, then also damage will be there. Now, the lubrications of wear rope it is done during the manufacturing. When you are manufacturing, that as I said, that they, there are a fiber core wear rope or steel wear rope strand as a core. Now, during the manufacturing itself, there is a lubricant is kept over there but then there is also need of re lubricating depending on the type of use sometimes you might have seen in some cranes and all they apply this your uh, cadmium compound over the wear rope you may see a black color that material or sometimes even the grease they put it. So, those 
how they will have to be applied for that also different methods are there which when you are particularly applying you need to see the ropes should not run very dry and then heat influence some you should not avoid that the there should not be the lubrications one main job is also between the sieve and the wear rope if it is moving over there there is a friction and it will generate heat the lubricant is taking away that heat. So, you should see that there is no point of the passes or path of the wear rope a heat generation takes place because that will be damaging your wear rope. Similarly, you should should be do the proper fitting the grooves in a, when your rope will be moving on a drum you can see wear rope used on the winch or wear rope in a drum or in you might have seen in a mine winder when there will be a winding drum and then there will be a sieve. Now, from the in the winding drum that your rope will be uh, moving say this is in your in case of your winding drum you will you will find that uh, in in case of your using a winder drum and then the sieve depending on the location of the drum and the sieve suppose you are having this drum and then we have got a sieve over here. So, now this wear rope will be going from the drum and to the sieve. So, there is an angle that is from the sieve to the edge of the wear rope which is called a fleet angle and then the in the groove where the wear rope will be there there is also a groove angle. Now, if this are not properly made then when the rope will be going from the drum to the sieve at that time on the groove edge it may that give a rubbing actions. So, that is why what should be the fleet angle and the groove angle and the drum length these things are to be matched. So, those are studied when you are uh, going to select a particular applications of the wear rope at that time we need to see that the location of the drum location of the sieve and then the groove it is made in such a way that in the passes of the wear rope it is not uh, uh, the not uh, not not interfering and you are not going to damage the wear rope. So, for that this fleet angle should not be too large there is a that is why there are international standards by which you will be selecting the fleet angle. Similarly, in your uh, there should not be vibrations whenever you are using a wear rope system there the vibration must be arrested. Say for example, when your case in a mine will be moving up and down at that time your the case must not oscillate for that exactly we are having the guide rope. So, that it will be holding properly and this particular arrangements are necessary. Similarly, your if there is a in a mining conditions there may be sand grit and all type of uh, that materials are there they should not come in contact with this. And sometimes if you are uh, you are having a loose uh, rope where rope is loose then suddenly you give a jerk that at that time that clink formations may be there and the wear rope may be damaged. So, that means that is your you should not give a sudden jerk or a sudden load you should gradually make it. So, that that rope does not get a shock load. So, this type of things are to be there by avoiding that you can increase the life of the wear rope. And also the while we are doing the operational arrangement how you lay the the wear rope that is on the drum in which directions your drum is rotating and your this rope is getting wound and unwound. They are also playing a big role in proper maintenance of the wear rope. Exactly there are three types of systems there we may have a one layer spooling in a one layer spooling your right hand drum and left hand drum. So, that you can use with the left hand drum you will have to use a right hand rope. So, that means, your that which lay of rope will be getting wound and unwound by which directional drum that place. Sometimes 
we have got a multiple layer spooling with multiple layer spooling the direction of spooling changes from layer to layer because there will be and then the rope to loop actions will be frictions will be there. So, for that time also you must meet with the right hand layer you will be using a left hand rope and with left hand layer you will be using a right hand rope by that the exactly they will be sitting properly groups to groups and in the rope to rope and that the frictional loss or the damage of the wear will be reduced. And then the ribbing also that is your uh, in a multiple part ribbing system the influence of the fleet angles between the ships and is often there. That is what I was telling about that this drum when it is going this rope will be going to a sieve. So, from there that is there how it is going to the sieve from this end to the sieve location there will be an angle that fleet angles plays a very important role. So, what in a maintaining the steel wear rope you need to see that the re lubricating of the steel wear rope is necessary. As I said already the wear ropes are manufactured during manufacturing the lubrication is given particularly if it is a fiber core wear rope then the fiber it keeps absorbed all the lubricant and while using it get uh, squeezed out and then it lubricate the internal strands and the wears. Now, this while you are using after some time you will have to apply this other lubricant. You may see that it can do a greasing over there. You can put sometimes that whenever the rope is taking a turn you can make a lubricant submerged over here and then this will be passing through the lubricant and that rope will be getting all the time lubricated. Now, then other another thing is for maintaining wear ropes you must keep it clean cleaning of the wear rope is very very necessary because if it is not clean the one of the most important thing in maintaining is the visual observation. The visual observation will get obstructed if there is a dirt or other layers are coming over there and then you do not know whether a particular wear is getting or not. And then you will have to if you find that one or two wares are coming out you should take care that this ex extruding wares should get nipped or cut in such a way that it does not get obstructed with another one and get peeled off. So, this type of general maintenance you must follow and then the in a handling it should be very careful as I said that you are laying whether your left lay and then your that uh, left and right hand drum these two are to be followed in handling, but at the same time when you are carrying the wear rope drum see here you can see in this figure this drum with the wear rope they have been lifted on the this that our forklift blade it is just that means the metal and the wear contact is there, but instead of that when is the correct form you can see that there is the reel has got a central shaft. So, you use a special type of uh, your there is a forklift in which it will that your a, a rod is going inside and it is getting lifted. So, there is no metal to metal contact over here. Similarly, sometimes in a wrong method this wear ropes a, a, a reel of wear ropes are being uh, carried by putting it onto the metal forks. So, this should not be should be avoided and you do a correct handling by doing this type of handling you exactly uh, do a lot of uh, life increased. Another thing is when you store you should store it in a proper place. So, that do not keep the wear rope just lying on a ground and then getting contact with the moistures and other things. This is a proper way of storing the wear rope or you should keep it covered. So, that rain and other or dew do not get any damage over here. So, that means the maintaining the wear rope you need to see that exactly how you are handling it, how you are storing it that is also very very important. Now, next thing is how you inspect the rope. There are many way many companies they have given 
instruments like that uh, Merester MD20 tester is a non destructive testing. That means, whenever a rope is uh, moving at that time you can heave, keep this handle equipment by which you can exactly measure that the where a rope is in a proper condition or not. The one way of doing it exactly the principle is very simple because if you are keeping a wire rope moving and here if you create a uh, magnetic flux here that if you are having a magnet then what will happen that field will get disturbed if there is a wire is coming out. That same principle is used and then you can get a detection that is if any wire is coming out. So, this principle are used and then there is a number of different non destructive testings by which we can find out if a wear rope wear is getting tensile that is it is elongated. If the rope get elongated you know that then the diameter will get reduced. So, if you can keep a sensor by which when the rope is moving if any particular portion you find that this diameter is changing then you can detect that that rope. So, this is an area where you can make a lot of even small instrument by yourself to do the testing knowing that thing that if there is any physical deterioration is taking place in the wear rope. So, that is why the condition monitoring it can be done for monitoring even if there is a crack in the wear or there is any breakage in the rope in any strand is there it can be detected that is why number of instrumentations can be thought of. So, if you see some what are the sensors used in mechatronics. So, those things can be applied over here. So, there could be a high end instrumentations there are the strip chart and the computer recording exactly whenever you will be using an instrument from there now nowadays the technology is available you just sense it that signal it can be transmitted anywhere you can put your that say it is a distance no matter wherever is there you keep it in your office and then the ultimately all the signal will be coming to you by seeing the signal you can find out that is what was the normal signature and that how that normal signature had got changed or varied. Sometimes you may have even near the sheave and where the rope is moving at that time you can keep a simple acoustic sensors by which we can get the noise signal. Now, if there is a groove is getting Ill, that is your wear out and then there will be a play of the wear and the, the noise emanated will be different and from there you will be finding that yes your condition has got deteriorated. That is the main principle of condition based maintenance system and which can be used in wear rope. Similarly, for the wear rope lubrications I have already told that is your the objective of the rope lubrication is that the core of the wear rope must not be allowed to dry or absorb moisture because if it becomes dry it will be absorbing moisture and that will deteriorate it will get because if you have fiber core then with uh, moisture it can get easily damaged and if the core is damaged then the rope will get damaged because it will get a kink. Then minimum internal friction and hence wear between the wires will take place that is why we will have to keep the lub rope lubricated and then lubrication will keep the wear minimum and uh, it will not also it will also keep the your wear of the drum or the sheave minimum and then there will be less uh, the surface will get exposed to corrosive atmosphere that is why by properly lubricating the wear rope you are also preventing the corrosion. So, that is a corrosive material do not come in contact. So, the rope life can be increased 70 to 100 percent by using a proper lubrication. Now, the properties of lubrications of uh, wear rope it is that what type of material or what type of lubricant you will be using it is always said that you must use a neutral type of lubricant will have to be used some this lubricant must have a good adhesive strength. So, that it does not come out of it it should get it could stick to the wear rope and it should be staying there for a maximum period and then it has got should be having a penetration property that means between the wares and the strands it should go penetration. So, the wear that the lubricant should have a low viscosity then it should be 
protecting against the rust and the corrosion and then also it should have a high film strength that whatever the film formed over here when it is moving over the sieve it should not get rusted that film strength is very very important property and then it should not get oxidized or it should not get hardened because of the conditions of the uses and also it should not be it is when you are moving over the sieve then you should be having a centrifugal force under that force the it should not get splashed out that is also a it should sticking to the wear rope that should be the property of the wear rope. So, normally petroleum jelly is used the different type of uh, wear rope lubricants are used basically this penetration type and the coating type and then the rope must be terminated at the end by giving white metal capel, wedge capel or thimble capel. This capel how they are formed, how they are maintained we will be discussing when we will be talking about the winder and winding inclusion. So, many types of machines they use exactly as we said in the previous class the drag line for your cranes and everywhere roofs are there. So, each application there is a special type of maintenance that to be followed and then you will have to perform very high level of uh, cleanliness and then the high level of lubrications and by doing that you can get a better life. So, this is how you can see that there are a lot of references are there because in the mining industry the wear ropes is a very very important one and that must be maintained so that you get a longer economic life. So, we will be discussing this while studying the machines once again, but I hope you have got now what is a wear rope and how it will have to be used in the mining industry. Thank you very much.